So what is it? What do you think it is? I know what people are saying that it is. Well, since we've put it on Facebook, tons of people are looking at it and we're getting a lot of comments. Well, before seeing this photo, I had no idea about it. Uh, how many people do you think know about this? Well, there's a lot of people who've heard about this. I first heard about it when I was about 10 years old, and there's a lot of similar stories out there. Let's look into it. field irrigator had left me to to guard this field of melons from from the coyotes because the coyotes will come and they'll eat the the tender melons they like to eat that so he left me there with a shotgun and with blanks and these flares that shot up and they explode in the air and the, and the coyotes will run away and I ran out of ammunition and my father was still not there and, you know he shows up at three or four in the morning okay I'm scared. The coyotes had eaten everything. Okay? And my father goes, what happened? We lost a lot of melons and whatnot. And I said, well, you know, I ran out of ammunition. You only left me a few shells of, of ammo. Well, you're not supposed to be shooting them all the time. Well, like I said, a lot of the melons were eaten. And he goes, well, I wish the goat man would have gotten you. And I said, well, maybe the goat man eat the melons. Who knows? But that's the first time I've heard of the goat man. We had heard the stories for years in the town of Parker, Arizona. Goatman was used as an explanation for weird things happening or as a way to scare people. It seemed unlikely to us that there could really be such a thing, but the stories were common enough to deserve an investigation. Goatman is a man, animal, creature that gets people. I mean, everybody has a different idea what Goatman is, but it's a man-animal creature that gets people, that's what it is. It's a person and a goat part. Definitely got a beard, a goat team. Oh, they go goat team? Um, <laughs> it's a man with it's like goat a feet, and he's got magic powers. Like a minotaur, but a goat? He wears like overalls, okay. like a plaid shirt. Wow. Oh, he's half goat, half man, you know, goat down from the belly down, you know, but has a little tail. The you know, pointy ears, with a, a goatee. <laughs> <laughs> nice, man. Uh, some people, I think, will see a goat man, an actual goat, with you know, walking on two hind legs, or or maybe it looks with a human body with a goat head. Uh, I believe some people have seen a guy with a beard staring at him. They think it's a goat man because they're imagining things. Um, to me, if you're saying goat man, I'm thinking a guy that has a goat head and a human body. A male, obviously a male body, because it would not be goat woman then. But, you know, that's what I think. He was a white man, um, sweaty, long scraggly hair, probably stuck to his face from all the sweat. But I never saw him in person, though. Doesn't seem to age either. I mean, from, from what I can see, he's still there. 
it's a sort of a, a gar, ooh, I just get the chills when I think, it's sort of a garlicky smell, a smell of when you let water stand for a long time and you have murky, putrid water mixed with the garlic smell, and it wakes up all your senses. And if I would smell that anywhere today, I would run as fast as I could go to get away from there. Well, when I first moved here back in 74, I lived up at Black Meadow Landing, which is above Gene Camp on Lake Havasu. And up there, everybody talked about the goat man. It was just one of those things everybody believed in, the goat man. I never saw the goat man, but we talked about the goat man a lot because up at Black Meadow Landing, a lot of California girls would come for the summer and camp and stuff. And being 15 years old, I was interested in that. So uh, we would use the goat man as a kind of a, a story for the girls. You know, if we're walking around at night in camp and somebody heard a noise, we'd go, that's probably the goat man. And the girls would go, go, what's a goat man? And we'd tell them that we'd make up stuff. Oh, he terrorizes local communities and, you know, kind of get the girls to latch on to you a little bit more to protect you from the goat man. So really the goat man was my friend, but I've never seen him. That's all I really know about the goat man. Yeah, I've heard of goat man a bunch. There's been several different stories. Um, it all depends if you believe on them, you know. Um, down the valley, there's been stories told up uh, up river it, in Met area, been stories told. Um, me personally, I've I've never seen him, but I've uh, been in situations where I I could have freaked myself out, and it could have been him. But you never know. The goat man was a big thing when I was growing up here in Parker, and just about any child that wouldn't mind, their mother would say, "The goat man's going to get you." Well, he was a very real person. Well, I was the youngest of four brothers or five brothers. And so I grew up hearing about the goat man when I was about four years old. And I was scared out of my scared out of my mind when I first heard about the goat man from my older older brothers. Tu crees que es algo de neveras o puede ser algo de neveras? Pues puede ser que sí, pero puede ser que no porque en realidad yo no creo y si es, pues es de de algo a uh, Increíble porque no creo, tal vez nosotros somos muy católicos, mi papá nos ha enseñado. Fuera un difunto, a lo mejor sí, pero tampoco sería bueno que ustedes anduvieran investigando esas cosas, porque en realidad es muy, es algo especial, algo respetuoso que se debe respetar, pero yo diría que no se anduvieran metiendo donde en realidad ni ustedes saben lo que andan buscando. So, ¿Tú crees que no es una buena idea que nosotros vayamos a buscar algo si de veras existe o si no existe? No. We would go back over here and not a care in the world. And we always felt like we were being watched. And come to think of it, we're missing two of our baby turkeys and a rooster and a hen that would free roam out here, and that's just within the last couple days. I first heard of the goat man, I was probably eight or nine or 10, and it was myself, my little sister, and a bunch of our friends camping out on Shea Road for the off-road races. And the, the parents and the oldest daughter told us of the goat man that there's this half goat half man he's goat from the waist down with hooves and he's hairy and he's got scraggly long hair and he's out there in the desert and don't go too far or the goat man will get a hold of you don't worry he's not going to kill you or anything but he'll get a hold of you scream in your face and scare the shit out of you so it was kind of like a a uh, story just to keep us kids close around at camp. Some friends of mine had come down to hang out and whatever from Wisconsin and just get away from the parents or whatever. We went camping out on Shea Road and Osborne Rosh by this big tree where we always went camping. 
I'd been there I don't know how many times. And I was just sitting there kind of trying to go to sleep. And I kept hearing all this noise outside. And I went and kind of zipped up the tent. And I looked out and I just saw this creature, something run by. And it scared the crap out of me. And I shut the tent real quick. And I went back in and I was just kind of listening and to everything, you know. And all of a sudden, something, somebody, I don't know what the heck it was, was trying to get into our tent. Just, what is that? Oh my God. I thought somebody else was out there, you know, just messing with us or whatever. And everybody woke up and it was just all out craziness for oh God, I don't know how long. Oh my God, oh my God. Oh my God. Oh my God. And then I went to look and see who the heck it was and I unzipped the tent and there was nothing. I mean, I walked outside, I looked around, I mean, I didn't see anything. There was nothing out there, there was nobody out there. And no, I still to this day, I don't know what, who, what the heck happened. And I'm, I haven't been out there since and I will not go out there again. So there was something out there? There was something. Do you believe that it was Goatman? I dang sure believe it was Goatman. I lived here all my life. I was born and raised in Parker, and I've heard countless stories about Goatman. We wondered if the Goatman legend existed anywhere other than Parker. A quick internet search revealed almost 76,000 hits, the biggest portion coming from the state of Maryland, where some believe Goatman escaped from a secret government genetics laboratory. Other hits include fawns, like those described in the Chronicles of Narnia, the Greek god Pan, who was half goat, half man, and the class of demons called Satyr. Some of the stories even overlap those of our own goat man. Some of the characters, I think the, the, the more prominent one is the fact that he likes to harass couples that are making out, couples that are together, and, and uh, pretty much I think he's a pervert. Some of the stories were fascinating. As we continued exploring, we came across more and more people who didn't want to talk about Goatman at all, not even for fun. Don't even talk about it, man. That's just, dude, that's just bad juju. Don't be bringing bad juju into my place. No stories about Goatman. No stories about Goatman because, you know, I've heard too many stories about Goatman. It's just, no, I don't, I don't even think about it. I don't deal with it. I don't open myself up to it because I don't want things like that coming into me, you know? I don't want it coming into my business, none of that stuff, you know? That's just, scares the uh, heck out of me. Uh, Any idea what Goatman is? You know what, I don't want nothing to do with that, I don't even care, so we'll see ya. Some other locals, even some who had lived in the area for years, hadn't heard of Goatman at all. I don't know anything about the Goatman, absolutely nothing. I moved here in 1978, and I know nothing about any kind of Goatman You've never heard that legend, huh? Absolutely not. In all those years? In all those years, yeah. I guess I just didn't ever run around anybody that ever talked about it or anything. No clue. Oh, well. I mean, it was stories. It was a collection of stories that guys, Bale and Hay, made up 
you know, when you're sitting out there and you got nothing to do and you're waiting for moisture, you know, you, you might sit out there all night. Well, what are you going to do? And so guys, you know, clowning around, started making up these stories about the goat man. And, and you know, and guys' imaginations get a little bit, what would you say, higher, wider, <laughs> deeper? <laughs> and so <laughs> these goat man stories evolved. I th I'm, I'm pretty sure that's where they evolved from. At least that's what I always understood. Anybody here heard about goat man before? Ah, oh, it's a bunch of crap. Something they invented to scare little boys like you. <laughs> Make it personal. <laughs> when I was little, yeah, they always, people always said, don't go under the bridge at night, the goat man will get you. Which bridge? I don't know, I just never went under any bridge. <laughs> just like any other mythological figure, it's just kind of silly to me. I think it's pretty funny. It's pretty silly. Well, it's interesting. It makes for good stories. Yeah, I heard about Goatman when I was really, really little, like second grade with my cousin. He used to tell me that if I was a bad girl, that the Goatman was going to come and eat me. It was like a scare tactic to keep me in line. Um, he always told me he lived down in the valley. It, he liked to eat little kids. <laughs> I believe that the goat man could be true, just like I believe Bigfoot could be true, or the Yeti, but I have no evidence. Could it be possible to find evidence for goat man? After all, most things worth believing in have some evidence to support them. What about the photograph being circulated on the internet that started our search in the first place? I walk up to my friend who's obviously upset and says, look what I took with my camera on my phone? I'm thinking, okay, whatever. I'm thinking it's some kind of, you know, stupid joke or whatever. When he flipped it around to me and I saw what it was, I mean, I literally, I know it sounds stupid, but I couldn't, I could not, it makes me almost nauseous. I couldn't even take the phone. Could this be Goat Man? Captured in the early hours of a Parker morning by someone who couldn't sleep? We're not convinced. If, if, if it's a picture of Goatman, it's exactly what I thought it was. It's exactly in my heart what I thought Goatman probably looked up. I mean, human, subhuman, animal, I don't know. It's weird. It was weird. And he was freaking out. Our little investigation was causing a bit of a stir. People were talking about Goatman like they hadn't done for years. A few weeks into our interviews, someone claiming to be Goatman joined Facebook under the name Nichad Bilagana with a full backstory. The story was a creative one. He claimed to have been a Confederate soldier who came west before being cursed by a local medicine man as punishment for escaping with a girl from the local village. His curse was to bear the features of a goat. Over a hundred people became friends with the Facebook Goat Man. Things became much more serious when we spoke to Scott Garrett, a local resident who had a frightening experience when he first arrived in Parker several years ago. So as I was, you know, coming back this direction to try to find where I made the wrong turn, I saw a man coming up out of the field and I decided, well, I'll ask for directions. I thought he was a farmer or something. So I pulled over and I said, excuse me, do you know where Nez Road is? And, uh, you know, of course he didn't say anything, didn't respond or anything. So I pulled up parallel with him because he'd, he'd come out and started walking back this direction. And as I pulled up parallel, I looked out the window. I said, excuse me, do you know where Nez Road is? And uh, that's when he turned and he turned like this. And I'll never forget the look on those eyes, the red fiery eyes. And he had these horns like ram's horns on the side of his head. And, I, and when I first saw him, I thought he had like waders on. But then I realized it wasn't waders, he had fur on his legs and hooves on him. And I was freaked out. I just, I, I totally lost it. I just hit the accelerator and took off. And uh, I'll tell you what, it was one of the craziest, most frightening experiences of my life. I went home and told my family, they laughed. They thought I was making a big joke. 
and uh, I wasn't. I was still shaking when I got home. And uh, it wasn't until, you know, weeks later that I started telling the story to people and people started down, down here in the valley, a lot of the natives started saying, you saw a goat man. And I didn't know what that was, you know, but I'll tell you what, I'd never want to see him again. We caught up with Scott a few days later at Bobby D's diner. He'd been thinking some more about his experience. When I looked down and saw him turn and look at me in those red eyes, it was as if those eyes were like peering into my soul and as if, as if they wanted to reach in and like tear my heart out of my chest. That's what the feeling was like. And, uh, you know, I've been having nightmares since we went down there on Saturday and talked about it, just re recounting and remembering that. It's, uh, it's something that I probably don't want to talk about after tonight just because I think what we're dealing with here is something that's, that's not of this world. Um, I don't believe what I saw as human. Scott's feeling about the goat man made more sense when we heard what Bishop Barry had to say, a minister who calls himself the Arizona Exorcist. He told us he thinks the goat man is the manifestation of a demon called Azazel. I think it's um, a more of a spirit, not, le not necessarily a physical being. I think it's a spirit that can go to many different areas, uh, almost like uh, there might be a activity in this area that draws that spirit there and it will manifest itself as the goat man, as that figure. So I think it's more of a, a spirit that kind of can um, change its image. Or, but uh, the goat man is probably like a symbolic to this entity. So it's like goats used to be a sacrifice to God, um, you know, forgiveness of sins. And, and um, they can relate to one of the fallen angels. Um, I believe his name is Azazel, is one of the ones of the 200 that fell in the book of Enoch, and they said he would take the form of a half goat, half man. Azazel, translated into our English word scapegoat, is mentioned in the Bible. Lots were drawn, like the flip of a coin, for two goats. One of them was a sacrifice for Yahweh, and the other took all the evil from the people and was sent into the desert for Azazel. Azazel is the chief demon of the Seder, called goat demons in Leviticus, with similar root words in 2 Chronicles, the book of Isaiah, and numerous other ancient Jewish texts. Could our goat man be the chief of a legion of goat demons? Bishop Barry thinks it's unlikely that Azazel is visiting Parker, Arizona in person. God flooded the earth and locked him into the, the earth. So if he's locked in the earth uh, until judgment day, uh, physically, I don't think he's able to leave that, that uh, containment, but spiritually, you know, maybe he's able to uh, move throughout the earth. The possibility of Goatman being a demon had crossed our minds when we heard Scott and others describe red glowing eyes. That didn't sound like any farm animal we knew about. See, on here, there's a, there's a string of light. Ryan and Rick Bigelow of the Phoenix, Arizona Paranormal Society also mentioned demons. We're uh, ghost investigators, and uh, we, uh, we're with a society uh, called PAPS, and we go in and uh, we do investigations on people that have claims of paranormal activity and uh, we just go in and do investigation to see what we can find or not find. Part of some of the entities that we are faced with and stuff, there is one called uh, demons. And uh, we do believe that uh, they have the capability to turn in themselves into uh, humans and also half human and half animal. Oh, hey. So what, what, what? Slow down, slow down. So where was this? When was this? How do you know it was Goatman?
We weren't expecting that phone call. In the several weeks we spent listening to stories about Goatman, this was the first filled fresh freaked out sighting. It came from someone who wanted to be anonymous and wouldn't appear in our film, with an actual location, miles from anywhere, and a recent sighting. We all had the same thought. It was time for a stakeout. <laughs> So we're gonna have three uh, cameras out here. Uh, camera A, camera B, and camera C. Uh, these three cameras will all be monitored remotely from our camp. And um, when we have these cameras on, uh, on from, we'll be able to control them remotely as well. And uh, also detect motion through software. Uh, if something's out here, we'll find it. Okay, so what we got here is three cameras covering a wide area where we're at, uh, base camp and everywhere else. We got camera A, camera B, camera C. We can also pick up any audio just in case we pick anything up. Um, it's covering a whole area where we're at, so if uh, Goatman's anywhere near, we'll definitely know about it. I don't expect to see anything. I don't expect to see Goatman. Maybe I don't either. I don't think we're going to find anything, to tell you no. the truth. Other than, you know, wildlife, coyote yeah. or something. That's about it. I think, I think we'll see coyotes. <laughs> I think, the, yeah, we'll see some coyotes. I think there's a possibility of seeing, think you know, the testimonials that we saw, I or that we we've heard. I think I think that we do have a possibility of seeing Goatman. If Goatman exists, we can see him tonight. If anyone's going to see Goatman, it'll be us. Definitely, true. but definitely um, true. But you know, is there a Goatman? I mean, you know, we'll find out tonight. That's true. We'll see what happens, right? Yep. Okay, we had to remotely adjust the camera settings uh, because they kept taking pictures of nothing. Probably a Nighthawk, maybe a bat was setting it off. So we went ahead and remotely adjusted that and uh, hopefully that'll work. Uh, meanwhile, we're gonna be working on this stuff and, and hopefully get it back running. All right, so we're getting prepared with the night shot. Hopefully you can see pretty good. I'll check it out. Josh, what you got, dude? <laughs> Other than a a, a, a feeling like I'm being watched. <laughs> you think yeah. it's Goat Man? Well, there's something out here. We've already seen some movement, but uh, maybe he's in coyotes or something, right? I'm hoping so. I'm starting to get a little, little creeped out, dude. <laughs> Seriously. Well, there's our camp. There is the Hemet RV, 1978. That's right. Here I was born. John, what do you think, buddy? Excellent. Yeah. Excellent. Yep. Yep. Getting some pretty good happy. shots. Yep, pretty happy, pretty happy. Um, there's like a general unease, right. you know, the, right. uh, around the camp, but... Let's see what happens. We're looking for goat man. <laughs> so 
So we have like a, an odd noise in our audio <clears throat> feed. And uh, I'm not exactly sure. No, the guys are trying to work on it right hey, now. Hey, Joaquin, so which mic on? is it that's picking it up? Looks like it's all three of them, guys, and they're all picking up the same signal. Joaquin, that's that that can't be because those those mics are, are like a mile apart. Oh, yeah, I know that, but look at this. Mic one, two, and three picking up the same signal all the way around. Let's let's just reboot then. That's all we got to do. Reboot. It's got to be a technical issue because that can't nope, be the wait, mic. Wait, stop. Yep, it just stopped. It's dead on all three mics. What just what what the hell? So you're not getting any feed from the mics either. Not getting anything anymore. <sighs> Dude, don't don't tell me we got to go out there. Uh, We're gonna have to go out and reset them. something like that it really well, makes exactly, you wonder that's exactly what we heard from some of these guys yeah it really makes you wonder is there some truth to these stories and there's the lid to the cooler right there well, that's a little freaky huh well to be this far out yeah, yeah. This, is, this is the this is the um... okay so we just found the camera this is camera b reset I went ahead and inspected the camera. Everything checked out. Wires are all right. Uh, cables are okay, even the lens. So, not sure exactly what happened, but I went ahead and rebooted it anyways. Keep going straight. No. Nope. Straight through here. I was taking this too slow because I didn't want Joaquin to uh, disappear out the back. Gotta take it a little slow here. Okay, so we just found the camera. Oh, we're gonna go check it. See why the microphone is picking up some weird signal. No, oh, looks all right to me, man. Yeah. Yeah. It's working pretty good. Okay. Yeah. Well, let's go. Yeah. Things would be wrong with the cameras. Well, uh, you know, software maybe. Uh, these are brand new cameras, man. Are you getting the shot with that? Yeah. You can see me. Yep. You gotta love that night vision. Yep. Love it, man. Thank goodness it's a full moon. Yep. Yeah. The thing, um, the thing about night vision is we're we're relying on it fairly heavily at this point. Uh, for all of these shots because this is an overnight stakeout. A lot of these things happen at night uh, in pretty much all of the interviews that we've had with people. Um, it's I don't think we've had a daytime. Have we had a daytime story before? No, I don't everything so. involves a night. Job. Everything's involving night. And um, so without this technology, we, this wouldn't be possible. So we got to go see what's wrong with it. That's why no one's ever found cool. Goatman before. Now maybe the technology, that's probably the secret. Yeah. Well, we'll find out, I guess.
So, so what? What is it? Is it a technical issue? What happened? What's going on? Well, you saw the mics. You you, you see that they're not. You know that, that there's nothing wrong with them. I don't know. All I'm going to say is that they're all picking up the same signal, and they all shut off at a. Set obviously, away. there's something wrong with the mics. Well, if they shut it, off. Can't be, it can't be the mics, and it can't be the cables, and it can't be the software. Because it's working again. Well, then what is fine. it working? I don't know. I so, don't know what it is. So good cables, good mic, good software, good computer. Good but everything the sound goes except off. the sound is off. Yeah, I don't know what's going on, guys. I don't know what we need to do here, but that's very odd. I don't get it. It's odd. Dude, we just lost camera A. Look what? at this. What? We just lost camera A. That is not good. I don't know it's what happened. I don't know. It's, a, it's, just a, it's just a feed issue, dude. Uh, no. Well, I, dude, we just checked it. Dude, we just lost camera B. No. no shit. Okay, this is weird. This is not good. What? Shit. Okay, guys. Guys, this is what's worrying me about this. Is that this does not happen. It just doesn't happen one right after the other. Them being miles apart. This is not good. Something is doing that. And it's not technical. It's not a technical issue. It's not the software either. I think what I think what we should do. Number one, not go out there. We need to just work off the one camera that we have and lock that. I door. agree with that. Let's just do that. I'm gonna, right. I'm gonna turn the camera off. Conserve energy. All right, guys, it's a little before 4 in the morning. Uh, we're all pretty tired, but we've noticed some movement that's on uh, camera C, which is the camera you remember that uh, stayed up. So we've uh, looked at the feed, and uh, we're just trying to figure... Whoa! Oh! Whoa! What was that? Uh, mm -hmm. Something's moving the camera. It's moving, nope. guys. Something is dragging the camera. You guys seen this? It's being dragged. What the hell is that? That's being lifted. Yep. Something's look, lifting look, that. Look, Some, look yeah. at it now. It's lifting right up. What is going on, yeah. guys? This is not good. Something's out oh. there, and something is dragging our camera. This is our infrared, oh. right? Right here? Yep. Yeah. yeah. Uh, what the hell, dude? Oh, oh. Yep. there goes the feed. We just lost the feed. We lost the feed? We totally right. lost Shh. the feed. No, all right, no, all right. What right. is the going data stream? on? Yeah, I, guys, I know, but we just totally lost that. Guys, okay, so let's think about it. What What could... It uh, could have been a coyote. It could have been a coyote. I, what else could have Dude, what, what, what or someone was the last time you saw a coyote someone, lift a, ca a camera? It could have been somebody someone's messing with us. Someone's got to be then. messing with us. Yeah, because there's got to be someone messing with us. That is not something was dragging that camera. It's um it's it's baffling because because honestly, the other camera's going down and now this is it's really freaking me oh, out. Oh, wait. We're Dude, back. we're back up. Something is Yep, what is that? Yep. Feeds back. What is that? Is this a live feed? That is a live feed. And you know what? That That's that. How can you be sure this is a live feed? Whoa. No, what was that? Dude, okay. okay. This has got to be live because we got a pretty good feed. That means it's pretty all right, close well to then, the perimeter. All right, well then what are we looking at? I don't know. What the hell is that? Well, guys, it looks like, looks like vehicles. Vehicles? What? Yeah. Where? Is, 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 is that our motorhome? Is that our camp? Dude, that's us. I believe somebody wants to believe this stuff. They want to have that fear. They want to uh, be scared. You know, people like to go to uh, haunted houses. They like to go to haunted houses because they, they want to get scared. And I believe people want to be superstitious. They want to believe that something exists, that something weird, un, un, inhuman, unhuman, whatever you want to call it, is actually out there that's going to get them. Um, until it happens to me, I, I, I have no fear of the gold man. I believe he exists in people's minds, but physically, I, I don't know. I can't tell you that. This here is a little ditty about a creature called Goatman. Whose life's a mystery throughout our history. Who's after you and me? It's Goatman. Standing about six feet tall. When you run, just don't fall. 
At night you'll hear it's called it's Goat Man. Just try to get away, hey, there's nowhere safe. Wander off and now you're bait, it's Goat Man. When you see those eyes creeping closer in the night, all you can do is cry. Life for you soon will end. Say farewell to all your friends. Better call your next of kin. It's Goat Man. Here we go. See the signs, that feeling you had inside. Oh, you'd still be here, but now you're filled with fear. Whose life's a mystery throughout our history? Who's after you and me? It's Goatman. Standing about six feet tall, when you run, just don't fall. Run back, you'll hear his call. It's Goatman. When you see those eyes creeping closer in the night, all you can do is cry. Now the story has been told, passed on down to young from old. When you feel the air get cold, it's Goat Man. If you do go out, please take a friend. But you best be sure you can run faster than them. 